Hello everyone, my name is Matt from Real World Review. Today I will be showing you how to replace the charging port cable on the iPhone X. Before we start, I need to go over some issues with repairs on the iPhone X and possibly water resistant phones in general. I'm not sure if this applies to everyone, but for this repair, there ended up being Face ID issues. Not sure what could have happened because all of the cables and back cameras looked fine, but along with that, portrait mode on both sides does not work. Not sure if Apple did this or if this was caused by me. Also, just like every repair on water resistant phones, there's no guarantees that this phone will be water resistant after the repair. Replacing the seals will help, but there's no way to know 100% if the phone is water resistant again. Ironically, this phone had liquid damage before I did the repair, so who knows if this phone was even water resistant in the first place. Anyways, let's get started on the repair. So the tools that you will need are the following. Penelope P2-bit, Y000-bit, JIS or PH000 bit, a small Phillips driver like shown, a flathead driver or standoff driver, and a pick of some sort. You also may need some heat. So we start with the P2 driver and remove the bottom two screws. Next we want to lift up the screen. For this I recommend adding heat. So I will heat up the plastic edges for a few seconds to make the adhesive soft. Now we will use a blade to get in between the metal frame and plastic frame. Once there is a gap, we will switch to a plastic pick to prevent scratching and any other damage. We want to start by lifting up the bottom a little bit and then do the same thing on the sides. Just make sure not to lift the screen up too much or you could damage the cables on the right side. Feel free to add more heat when needed. Once all the sides are up, you will need to unclip the top portion, just like we did on the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus. Once all sides are up, we will tilt the screen onto the right side, remove the five Y000 screws holding the metal plate down that covers the cable plugs, and then remove that metal piece. Once that is done, we will unplug the screen, and remember that the top flex cable has some adhesive holding it down. Just carefully pull that cable away from the phone. Now we can start to remove the logic board, so unplug all the cables that we can see. Next thing you want to do is grab the PH000 bit and remove the metal piece screw, the two logic board screws, and the two camera screws. Removing the camera screws makes it a little bit easier to remove the board, along with the metal piece that goes around the cameras. It's up to you what you want to do. For this situation, I moved it to the side, but if you want to remove it, that's fine. Just remember to put it back when you're done. Now we can get a pick and pry up the left side of the board and lift it straight up, moving any cables out of the way. Remember that there is a little cable on the top left of the board that needs to be unplugged if you haven't done that already. Once the board is out, grab the Y000 bit and remove the five screws on the bottom portion of the phone, and then grab a pick and remove the metal panel covering the speaker plug. Next, grab the PH000 bit and remove the four screws on the bottom. Once those are gone, the antenna thing can be lifted up towards the bottom, making it easier to unplug. Once that is unplugged, we can lift up the bottom speaker. The bottom speaker is stuck to the speaker grill, so break that seal and lift it straight up. Now unplug the Taptic engine and put it to the side. Now grab a standoff bit and remove the bottom three screws along with the plastic piece that's on the left side. 
Lastly, you will need to remove these two bottom screws with a PH000 bit, like shown. Now we can remove the charging port cable. There are a few ways to do this. One, you can remove the battery and side metal piece and remove and set the cable back in place. Two, you can remove the side panel out and force the cable out and in under the battery. Or three, you can do what I did, which is lift up the battery a little bit because I accidentally stripped a screw on the right side. Regardless of what you do, remove the screw right here with the PH000 bit and move the cable out of the way. So we will lift up the bottom battery cell, which is not the easiest thing to do. If you can grab the pull tabs, go for it, but I had issues with that, so I added some heat and pushed a pick under the battery so I can get a hold of the adhesive. After that, I carefully used something to grab the adhesive and pulled it out. Once the battery is lifted out or removed, you can start removing the old charging port cable. Just make sure you don't rip out any other cables in the process. Now that the cable is gone, we will put the replacement one back in. What I did is set the cable in place and screwed in the bottom two screws to make sure that the charging port was perfectly in place. Now since I didn't have replacement adhesive, I'm just going to use double sided tape to keep the battery in place. Not a huge deal, but I don't want it rattling around. Now we can start putting the phone back together. The first thing we want to do is put the plastic piece back in place along with the three standoff screws. Next we want to put the Taptic engine back in place. You can put a screw back into the Taptic engine on the top left, just make sure not to put any of the other ones back in. Now we can line up the bottom metal plug back into place, just make sure that you put the speaker in before adding any screws. We can plug in the speaker cable and put the metal cover over it along with the Y000 screws that go in. Make sure not to over tighten the screw like Apple normally does. Now set the metal piece down and start putting all the screws back in place. And then grab the PH000 bit and put the screws back in place as well. Remember to add the screw back into the cable on the right.
Now we can carefully set the logic board back in place, just remember that the top cable is a pain to plug in. Once the board is in place, put the five logic board screws back in place, even though I only put in four. If you're having issues with the top flex plugging in, move the face ID unit over to give you more room, although I don't recommend doing this. It's a pain to get the face ID back into place. Once everything looks good, start plugging in all the cables that you see, except for the battery. We can now put the screen on, but before you do this, evaluate the adhesive around the screen and decide if you need to put new adhesive on. In this case, I did not need to. Once the cables are carefully plugged in, plug in the battery and put the metal panel over the connections. Now we can grab the Y000 bit and put the screws back into the correct places. And finally, I will grab the PH000 bit and put the fifth logic board screw in. Now we can set the screen back on the phone finally and test to make sure that the phone is charging, which it is. Now that everything is good, we can put the bottom screws back into place. And that's it. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section or on Twitter at Matt of RWR. And feel free to follow me on the social media listed above. Also, subscribe to my channel if you want more repair and review videos. Thanks for watching.